Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today we're going to be talking about something that was so freaking interesting when I heard it. Um, I kind of lost my shit for a minute and then realized that it might not be as great as I thought. So what we're going to be talking about today is published works versus curated works. And we're going to be going through an article about this. So before we get really far down this road together, holding hands and skipping and shit, I just want you guys to know that wherever you listen to podcasts, make sure that you give this podcast the most outstanding review you can because it's the right thing to do. Also, I want to say, I don't know for those of you who listen to podcasts on Audible, if this is the case, I should actually try it right now. Um, I got a comment from someone saying that when they tried to listen to the podcast on Audible, it did not work. So let's see if this is legit. Yeah, it doesn't work. I don't know what the hell that is. Okay, so the podcast is on Audible, but it does not work. Okay, so I guess I will look into that. If there are any other places where you listen to podcasts and um, the podcast isn't working, drop me a line and let me know. Um, When you do drop me a line, as a lot of you do, and I love you guys for it, I love communicating with you guys and talking, let me know where you listen to the show. That's really important. It shows me kind of how important certain places are and what efforts to put into those places. So I appreciate that. Um, Also, if you have any, um, I don't know, douchebaggy poet friends, you should totally let them know about this show because this is a place where douches are useful and acceptable. So that would be great. Also, let's see here. Oh yeah, if you're listening to this, I am now not in the desert. I am back in La California, and I had a really good time. It was really relaxing. After about the first day, I was ready to come home. I was like, should I, should I stay? But I was getting really angsty, and sure as shit, I go away for a week, Tucker Carlson gets fired, and CM Punk is spotted at a Raw show. What the fuck, Right? The whole world falls apart when I'm not, when when I'm unplugged from the goddamn internet. Fuck me. But I had a really good time. I'm going to be doing a live stream in about an hour, and I'm going to tell everyone everything that happened on the trip. If you're interested in finding out what I did on my vacation, you can go over to my YouTube channel and watch the live stream about it. For those of you who have orders that you have ordered. Um, I will be shipping those out Monday or Tuesday. Possibly Tuesday, now that I think about it, because I have another um, physical therapy appointment. So I might try to kill two birds there. So that is that. Let me see. Should I start this episode off with a poem? I'll start this episode off with a poem. Because while I was gone, I read um, this book, White Knuckle, by Stephen Bruce. And I was quite impressed by it, actually. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try this one. It's called A Domestic Song. At night it would rise up through the floorboards. Raised voices, vicious words. The dogs barking, then yelping. Scuffing, wailing, furniture breaking, police sirens. Pounding on the front door. Neighbors gossiping in the street. It was all a part of the Madhouse Symphony. Um, I I noticed that my voice changed when I started reading. Do I have weird fucking poet voice that I didn't realize I had until just now? Um, That was um, a domestic song. 
good little poem there. Um, I'll, I'll do a video about this and go into a lot more detail about it. But again, it's called White Knuckle by Stephen Bruce. Um, I'm assuming you can get this on Amazon. Yeah, printed in Great Britain by Amazon. Yeah, so Amazon book. There you go. I think it's time for the motherfucking shoutouts. So I want to give a big thank you to those motherfuckers over on Patreon. I want to thank you, Michael, to Cedar, to Harry. And then I want to give a big thanks to those folks over there in the thank you crew. Patrick, Britt, JH, Jan, Deb, and Ethan. Thank you guys so much. You guys are fucking awesome. And then over in the fucking anarchy crew, the place to fucking be. I want to give a big thank you to Bunny, to Nate, to Minnie, to Thomas, to Tim J. To Shaylin, to Tim G, to Chill Baby, to Tamara, and to Adam. Thank you guys so much. You guys are fucking beautiful people. And then the biggest, the biggest of the thank yous go to those big swingers over there in the chat book of the month club. The goddamn chappies. I want to give a thank you to Chase and to Caitlin. You guys are awesome. Thank you guys so much. Me as an action figure, out and out my Etsy shop. Links will be down below, and we'll talk about that when we start talking about plugging butts. So with that said, on with the show. All right, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you. That's nice. This is not a new shirt. Oh, that's so sweet of you. Thank you, yes. Oh, your hair looks really good, too. Thanks. All right, now enough with all the ass kissing. Let's get to the goddamn art. Okay, so this article, and again, I want to give a big thank you to Bucks for just being a bad mamma jamma and talking about shit like this over there on the Slee Rickets. He turned me on to this. It is a article in Lit Mag News over there on the stack of subs. This is by Timothy Green. And I think Timothy Green is like an editor for... Is it Rattle? Is that what he said? I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway, doesn't matter. Look it up. Timothy Green. So, uncurated. The case for a new term of art. This is honestly unbelievable shit here. Lit Mag editor rethinks what it means to be previously published. Okay, now check this out. This thing here, that he put this out in March. So, I'm a little late to the party. I don't want to read this whole article because it's a great article. And you guys should go read it. I'll have a link for it down in the notes. Oh, Timothy Green has worked as an editor for Rattle Magazine since 2004. He's the author of American Fractal and is co-founder of the Right Wood Arts Festival. Motherfucker's got street cred. That's what that's all about. Okay, I'll just, I'll read it. Fuck it. Just go over there and fucking give it a little fucking how's your father kind of thing. It might seem too ironic for fiction, but the literary community has spent decades unnecessarily shackled by language itself. The word published bears no weight in the digital age, and yet... Purely out of habit and momentum, we still pretend that it does. Literary magazines continue to require submissions to be previously unpublished, so we hide our work offline in the dungeons of our file folders, like some archaic virginity rite. We avoid sharing our newest writing on Zooms and open mics as if it might become deflowered by the exposure. We refuse to genuinely engage in the medium of the day from this senseless fear alone. Poems, especially, must be banished from our friends and fans when they matter most when they're fresh and relevant to the cultural fucking conversation. That is so fucking good. Okay, he didn't cuss in there. Let me just say that. Obviously, Timothy Green is a much more well-educated man than I. But check this out. What he said right there, this is so fucking true. There are poems that I have that like are like fucking, I don't know, a year old that I feel like 
are not culturally relevant anymore. You know, there are times when, especially as poets, and especially if you listen back to those episodes about politics and poetry, and even the book or the podcast on book censorship I did last time, okay, there are moments when things need to be said. And that's why I really feel like Instagram and Twitter and all this shit are our blogs, our websites. These are the broadsides of today. You know what I'm saying? Like, people need to see shit when shit gets writ. I like that. <laughs> so, good on you, Timothy. I like that. We're creative writers, and yet we constrain ourselves over a simple lack of imagination. We haven't thought of a word to replace publication. Now that publication is... Irrelevant. This is so true. And this whole thing about hiding our work. I, mainly because I'm kind of fucking stupid and shit a lot of the time. And I used to not pay close attention, which is why I started doing spreadsheets and stuff. But I would, set, the best part of this, this is the best thing about this. So I, when was that? It doesn't matter. I submitted a bunch of poems to, like, The New Yorker and... Oh, what was that other fucking big wig fuck you magazine? I can't remember. I can't remember. But it took them so fucking long to fucking get back to me. I forgot I had submitted these poems to them. And then I put them out in a book and published a book. Not even a chat book. It was in... I think they were all in The End of Everything. And it took one of the places, like, a year to get back to me. So it's like... By the time they sent me a rejection telling me that the poems that can't be published anywhere have been rejected, I was like, oh, fuck, that was a good break because those have been published for like fucking six months now. Okay, the word publish is almost seven fucking hundred years old. It comes through old French from the Latin publicaire to make public. This wasn't easy in the 14th century. Books were still copied by hand. We can make public declaration we can make a public declaration shouting our thoughts in a town square if anyone cared to listen. We could hammer a notice to a post or a, a, a poster. And the ten percent of the population that was literate could read it. Even after Gutenberg invented the printing press, making something public requ required real skill and a large capital investment. A press itself was expensive. The very act of having your words published by a press carried significant value. In the 21st century, in the age of the internet and social media, our words can be published with a single tap. Millions of people publish content in the time it took to read this sentence. What does it even mean to be a publisher? In this new world. We haven't thought of a word to replace publication now that publication is irrelevant. That's one of the highlighted little things right there. So publication means nothing, but it doesn't mean that we're doing nothing as publishers. For 20 years, I've been publishing Rattle Magazine, and that has value. But what specifically is the value? What service are we actually providing by editing and creating a magazine? I've come to realize that what I've been providing for my entire career isn't publication at all. It's curation from the Latin curare, which means to take care of. I'm not a publisher. I'm a curator. My job is to sift through thousands of submissions each week and highlight, in a respectful and meaningful way, those poems that others might enjoy reading. We have thousands of readers who appreciate the way we curate poems. They like our tastes and know that if they open a book or click a link to the Rattle website, what they will read will probably be worth their time. 
But we still think of ourselves as publishers and still demand that submissions to our magazine be previously unpublished. That phrase is what's known as a term of art, something with a special meaning for a particular field or profession, and it's become a damaging term of art. What we need is a new term of art that reflects the environment we're actually living in. I propose that we adopt the term uncurated to replace unpublished. Previously uncurated work is that which has not yet appeared in any curated collection. No books or magazines or anthologies in print or online. But it leaves open the ability to self-publish on social media or blogs or message boards. It allows the work to be shared on podcasts and open mics. Tweet your poems in flash fiction. Tag the person it was written for on Facebook. Workshop stories online. Blog chapters from your novel in progress. This is how a literary culture thrives. I could not fucking agree with you more with that statement. Imagine how literature would thrive if we could share our art with our friends in the medium of the era. The new term might help poets the most, but all writers will benefit from the extra creative freedom. Even those who have no intention of using their own digital media will be protecting their ability to start in the future. Um, by focusing on the act of curation rather than publication, literary editors cease being an impediment to literature's validity while retaining what actually matters to us. We can keep the exclusivity of being the first or only publisher to curate the work. We can still buy printing rights or serial rights or archival rights. What is lost by moving on to a better term of art? So the thing that Timothy here is saying is that at Rattle, their submission guidelines now say previously uncurated. Like they're looking for previously uncurated poems. But if you post those same poems on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or something like that, that's fine. He even says here that um, are self-published books considered curated? And he would say yes. So I guess now if you put out your own book, um, according to this, um, that is still unpublished. I don't know. Can you can you curate your own stuff in a book full of your stuff? I don't know if that's the case. But at the end here, he says, If you're a publisher reading this, I hope you'll adopt uncurated as a new term of art along with me and help it grow. If you are a writer, I hope you'll encourage others to switch by using curated in your bios. So the example of this is, my poems and stories have been curated by X, Y, and Z. I really like the idea of this. But, and I, this is exactly the same thing Buck said on his show, was he was like, to change the way people talk, like in, like, oh yeah, you know, my stuff's been curated here, here, and there, and there. Like, that that might be something that could happen, but I mean, it might take another 700 years for that to catch on. Who knows? But I like this idea because, um, I know a lot of poets who don't ever put their stuff out for this fear. And it's sad because like most people would never even know that these people write fucking poems because they don't fucking post them anywhere and they're not getting submitted or they're not getting published anywhere. They're submitting tons of shit to people, but they're not getting in anywhere. So this, this idea of places doing this, I really think is cool. And I would really like to join this movement where, um, like poetic anarchy press, um, the blood rag, bloodshed review, the whole fucking thing. Like, we will accept um, previously uncurated shit. That's awesome.
I don't know. Like, I want to know from you guys. Do you listening to the show? Do you not submit? Or do you not post stuff anywhere? Or put stuff out yourself for fear that you won't be able to get that published in a journal later? Like, what what are your thoughts on this? I think this is awesome. And if you look down in the comments, um, I mean, there's 151 comments on this. Um, and I'm pretty sure all of them are kind of into it. This one guy here says, the term curated is unfortunately being bastardized across different media and in academia when selected or chosen would do just as well. As in, we've curated the best toasters of 2023. Mm. All right, whatever. All words are fucking bastardized in some form or another. So just deal with it. But the other thing that this has, let me actually click on this link here as well. Oh, wow. There's a bunch of people who support this idea. But yeah, th this idea is great in the sense that it allows writers to share their work with people. And especially when it's talking about timely cultural issues. I fucking love that shit. Um, the one thing, though, that I just don't see ever happening is someone saying, like, like, I don't know, calling their mom up and going, hey, mom, guess what? I got curated in Reader's Digest or Woman's Day. I don't know, some magazine my mom would read or something like that just sounds silly. And maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's what he's talking about. The problem that we think that sounds silly. You know? Um, I still think publishing is kind of a big deal. And if he is going to um, look... See, here's the thing. So he's saying he is a curator, not a publisher. Okay? But him... I don't know if Rattle has a print version. I don't know if it does. It might. I don't know. Like, him putting out the magazine, okay, that he curated. The act of doing that is publishing. Like, I don't know. Like, I could curate a whole lot of things, but if I do anything with those things, now it becomes something else. You know, you curate something for something else like you don't just curate a bunch of money into your pocket and then it's just going to stay in your pocket for the rest of your life you're eventually going to take that money out and use it for something okay so if you aren't going to be a publisher anymore why the fuck are you curating anything like is anyone going to like why would anyone submit anything to you if your whole idea is not to ever put anything out because when you put that magazine out, you have published that magazine. So that whole idea of that word changing, I don't see that happening. But for a publisher and an editor to say, you can send me stuff that you posted elsewhere. That's fine. As long as I'm getting the first right to put that into um, print somewhere. That's a very awesome fucking thing that the world fucking needs. So I am 100% in support of that idea. Um, but let's not like kid ourselves. We are editors and we are publishers. That is what we do. I don't know. Like in his article right there, he was bragging about the thousands of people who read their stuff because they enjoy what gets curated there. So that's great. He curates the stuff, but in order to show anyone that stuff, he has to publish it. Okay. So it's not like that word's going to go away. All right. Enough about that. So in the description of this video, I'm going to have the link to the article, a link to 
the thing where you could sign to say, I support this and I agree with this. And then there's also a list of magazines that have said that they are going to do this as well. So if you are someone who likes to send submissions out, this is probably a really good list to start with. So on here so far, there's Rattle, One Art, Helio Sparrow, Lavender Review, Meniscus, Avant Appalachia, McQueen's Quinterly, and um, one down here, Steel Jackdaw, that hasn't been added yet um, to the actual list. But this is fucking really cool. But I swear to God, if this gets to a thing where I'm like, yeah, this is really cool. I enjoy this, but... And then Timothy Green or the crew of people who are going to live and die by this are going to go, no, you have to stop saying publishing altogether or else you're not in the cool kids club. Then I'll burn the whole fucking club down. Like, I don't give a shit. Um, I still like the idea. Let's just steal it and make it normal. If they're going to be weird about it. I should probably talk to somebody before I just start making random assumptions about people. That's how wars start. But hey, I'm a barbarian, right? So anyway, so the links for these things will be down below. And I can't wait to hear what you guys think of this. If you guys think this is the coolest thing since fucking sliced bread. Or if you think this is the dumbest thing since Pet Rock. I don't know. Like, whatever you guys think. Let me know. Um, and then, um, I guess... I guess it's time for those lovely, feel-good, mother-effing butt plugs. So, with the butt plugs today, guys and gals... Come on, come all to the greatest show on earth. This is me as an action figure by me. It is an awesome chapbook of poetry about my childhood and just nostalgia. Looking back on fun times. Um, it is gorgeous. Gold metallic cover. It looks so good in person. Like you guys really aren't getting the the shizzo with this it just the paper is fucking gorgeous dude i love this paper okay anyway you get this over at my etsy shop i'll read a poem out of it for you um let me see here this one is relatively short this is called first kiss we were in the giant tire in the sandbox kara had a mustache made out of orange juice it tasted like nothing. Nothing happened. Nothing changed. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Other boys found us, made fun of us, got the teacher. I was forced inside, sat in the corner, in the dark. They called my mom, but I had done it. It was worth it. I think I've actually read that poem on the show before maybe maybe not on the episode about workshops i think i read that poem but yeah so there you go so i just read it again deal so that is uh, me as an action figure links to the etsy shop down below i want to let you guys know about something that's happening okay it's happening soon on cinco de mayo may 5th there is going to be something really, really big and huge going on at my Etsy shop. So, if you are listening to this and you know the 5th of May has not come yet, look at your watch, look at a calendar, look at your phone. Like, who wears watches anymore? Am I right? And set yourself a reminder that on May 5th, something big is happening at my Etsy shop. Just saying. Just keep that in mind, everybody. May the 4th be with you all you want, but on May 5th, something's going on. 
Okay, so be aware of that. Um, let me see anything else. That's all I can think of right now. Um, Blood Rag issue ten is out now. I think. Good God, I don't know if I put it out. But um, issues one through nine are available for a free digital download on my website, IHateMountWall.com, and just click the blood rag once you get there in the menu bar. Or I think it's actually, if you go to IHateMountWall.com slash the blood rag, might just be blood rag, don't know. Um, you could find all of the first nine issues there for you to download. And other than that... I think that's it. Keep buying my books. Type hard, everybody. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.